say a bit of um, My name is Rob Salmon. I'm a dental surgeon. Before that, I was a dog breeder. And before that, I was a dog surgeon. I started in dogs in 1967. And I uh, ran my first surgery in 69. And it became my passion. And so I embraced it. And by the grace of the Lord, it became vet. And I've been able to use some of those um, things that I've learned. In the dog world. For all my sins, they made me a life member of Dogs New South Wales. And I was on the board for there for a while, doing a lot of work with um, governments and trying to pass laws that would keep our sport in, in good order, but it was left to me. So I like to give back. And this is, I started doing these seminars in Sydney, and we do them. We had one last night that I'd organised. And Nikki um, Teasdale from uh, a Jane Street Veterinary Hospital, Bindley, um, came up to our place, and came down to our place, wanted to learn a bit more about frozen semen and what I do, and said, listen you bastard, you've got to come up here and do this up here. <laughs> and uh, so we, I took a week off work to come up and spend it with the team up there, and thank you for making me so welcome. This, that, all the girls from the Jane Street Veterinary Hospital, thank you very, very much. They're really welcome. I, honestly, I, I do it for the love of it. I don't get paid for it. Um, but when you get people like this, and uh, everyone, it feels like old home week. So many of you I've seen before and judged some of you, and it's been great. And thank you for making me feel very, very welcome here in, in Queensland. Um, yeah, so Nikki asked me would I come up and check and improve her stuff, and truly, I mean, she's all over it. She's, she's had, we had another, well, she told me another success with her timing with the, with the progesterone machine that they've got. They, they do a lot of um, controls, really lots of controls, outside and inside controls. So they, they've just been bang on and doing some fabulous work. So very happy to be part of that and what you guys put me on. So if this is acceptable to you and, and this forum works for you, we may do this again in the future. Um, I'll go other topics. And that being the case, I'll ask you to contact Nikki with the topics that you want to discuss. And it won't just be me. Um, you don't want to hear me just wind bagging away. I'll get other specialists and other people in as well to discuss topics for you, if that's the case. And then we'll call that a little bit more to you. <laughs> so thank you very much. So that being said, we may as well get on to our first topic. Now, I chose this topic not because I want you to learn exactly how to do ovulation time, because it's pretty complicated. I want to show you some of the reasons why it is complicated, so you understand the ovulation time more than anything else. You've got the likes of good people like this to, to do it for you, but if you can understand it, you'll understand also why it doesn't always work. So, if we go to yellow. So, in talking about ovulation timing, we're trying to um, yeah, look at basically when the eggs are going to be ready for the first ones. And, yep. So, we're trying to work out, are we trying to work out the exact time that ovulation happens when the eggs are released? Are we trying to work out when the eggs are going to be ready? Or, are we to, or is that the same thing? Are, are the two things the same? You know, and, and in every other species, when they ovulate, you the semen in, you get puppies. Yeah? You know, in horses, in cattle, that's what happens. But not in this species. Next slide, please. So, I'm going to take you back to your biology days. Don't squint like that. Biology is a good subject. Um, and I'm going to take you back to, you might remember that there was cell, you have to learn about cell reproduction. There were two ways. There was mitosis, which is just all your cells reproducing themselves all the time. And there was meiosis. Meiosis is the formation of either a sperm cell or an egg. And the way I used to remember it was meiosis had an E in it like sex. And that's the way I used to remember that it was the formation of the egg. And so you start off with a, what's called a germinal cell, which divides to give you these precursors of what's going to eventually be a oocyte, and eventually they divide to give you this primary oocyte, which still has what's called the, the full chromosome content. You know, the, the, it has in humans a 42, or 48 in humans, 42 in girls. So then, then 
that divides again to give you a secondary oocyte with half with the um, half of the number of chromosomes, which eventually split, and eventually you get the egg. And then, of course, you're ready to go. Once the egg's there, you're ready, yeah? It's released, and you're ready to go. You would think. In every other species, that's what happens. Not in dogs. In dogs, eggs are released here where this line is before they do the, the second division. They're released into the oviducts before they're ready to, to, to uh, fertilize. So, sure, we can tend with the reasonable clarity when the dishes are related, that there are also variations that you can learn about tonight. But what we can't tell you is when is that egg definitely ready. And then, not only does the egg have to divide, but a little microscopic spot, so small you can't see with a laundry microscope, the electron microscope called the zone of lucida. That has to soften, and that will get one sperm. And there's no test for that. There's no test to know exactly when the eggs divided, and no test to know when the zone of blue stuff is there ready to assess those. Next one, please. So let's look at when, when the eggs released. There's one hormone that causes the release of the eggs, and that's the blue hormone, LH. When that's released, the bitch will release her eggs. Next slide, thanks. It's the biological trigger that stimulates ovulation. And so, of course, we'll have a new age. Next slide, thanks. Uh, so, this is an ovary, just to show you what we look at. This is a corpus luteum that's formed. That's the structure that forms once the egg is, has been released inside the ovary. And that produces progesterone. Once the eggs release, the CL forms in most breeds. In some breeds, the CL forms, believe it or not, just before the eggs release. In other breeds, it's a bit slower and produces a bit after the release of the eggs. So there are variations. So now we've got two variations. LH, it can spike within 12 hours, or it can have a variation of being a 48 hour. Spike. Most of them are 24 hours, some can be 12, some can be 48. But she's all rich. Yeah, already we've got a problem. Then we've got the problem when there's a seal form, because this is what we measure. Next slide, please. Um, so, this is just to show you the formation of what the egg looks like as it comes to the surface. Next slide, please. And these are follicles that are ready to rupture the bits that was in season and people want to be sexed. These follicles are ready to, to go, as opposed to this one, which had multiple follicles. And this is when you, you yeah, this bitch, they wanted us to inseminate, and she had cysts that produced an estrogen, and she, she had no real rise of progesterone, she just kept, kept on staying in season, staying in season all the time because she had functional cysts. Inside, when you get this sort of problem, uh, these cysts these just keep on forming the eggs, stay there, and go set on. This is another problem to see. If you had, if you had the dishes where they come in and take the first blood, and she's the baseline, five days later she's still baseline, five days later she's still baseline. Sometimes with those dishes, by the time they're ready to release the eggs, it's not, not a good look. You know, the eggs have gone set on. This is why I sometimes you know, will go into these um, ready, to go, ready to, to do fractured semen and say to people, I don't want to go there. I don't want to waste your semen, I don't want to put this through the trauma, I don't want to keep going to the expense. It's time to pull out. And this is something you need to consider because so many people say, oh, I've got lots of semen, I still want to do it. You put this through trauma for what? Now, it may not be worth it sometimes, let alone the expense and everything else. You've got to really realise this is now cutting edge stuff. Sure, I did the first frozen season actually in the world when I was in 40 years science for when these slash of the Africans did you know, for um, that was in 1976. But technology has improved a bit. We've got progesterone now, and those days we didn't have progesterone, we're just like we, we had Afghans because Afghans we throw their own pants together and they get pregnant. So it's not <laughs> that way that we have the right group and that got things started in the world of frozen sin. But um, the tradition has improved our timing from those days, uh, but there's still things that we have to improve which we'll talk about as we go along. Next slide, please. Um, you can't see this clearly. This bitch, this was a bitch who had those ovaries. Um, we went in, found all the cysts on one ovary only. So we took that over out. She was hemorrhaging, just continuing to her PCV. Her blood, her red cells were so large she was anemic, which 
long, long time, you've got two problems. You've got one, the fusion model of estrogen, which will eventually cause the damage to be big. Estrogen does just that. It actually causes bleeding from the gums and, and all sorts of other areas. Remember, one of the bits is cycling, when she's bleeding. She's not bleeding from the uterus. It's not a period. This is bleeding from her vagina and vulva. This estrogen makes it swell so much that it pushes red cells through the, through the wall of the vagina. And if you have a lot of estrogen and keep on going, you can actually cause so much loss of blood that they will go um, and then you can then do it. So <clears throat> what do we what have we used in the past for timing of, of our bitches? Yeah, we had the old the old fashioned 10 to 14 days, of course, count from the start of the bleeding. Then we got a bit more technical. I thought I was just smart when I was doing John Spears and got pretty bitch pregnant. Thought they drew it all in. Um, and then hormone assays. They're the three methods that we utilize. And I still utilize all three to some extent. I certainly didn't start counting the first day of the bleeding. So we see this bitch is going to go on for a long, long time on baseline. That she had problems. I certainly do smears because I like to see where things are going. I use smears a lot for my infertility cases because I can learn a lot from, from, um, from smears from those more than I do for, for insemination cases. The hormone assay now has taken over, especially for progesterone assay. Just like this. <clears throat> so this is what we're trying to achieve, a normal, good normal mating. More and more, we're not seeing this in our dog. Why? Because we are mating with those little bit late. And we think that a well, mate is natural. Uh, it is natural, but it's also this is low behaviour. And if a male doesn't run with bitches and the season at some stage, not necessarily jump on their bones, but you know, next to them. And so in a while, if you think about it, you know, we're all talking about natural diets and natural this and natural that. In the wild, the young male is observing matings. I'm not suggesting porn for dogs. <laughs> but I am suggesting that if you can introduce dogs early to, to fishes, you'll have a lot less problems later on. Because you will know what to do. So if you see it happening, if you does it early in his life, he'll be fine later on. It's difficult because, on the other hand, you don't want to be doing too early because you've got very interesting diseases that you want to be cleared for. Uh, you've got you know, all sorts of issues of doing it early. Genetically, it is better to always do it early and push the genetic curve further on, believe it or not. That's just one of the facts of life. That's why a chicken needs to take six, seven, or eight weeks to, to become table size. They, they select the mouth chickens for eight weeks, they take us half the time because they've always pushed the genetic curves. I'm sure they've improved. Nutrition and other things as well, but genetics and So, yeah, okay, we went to the next slide very quickly and see what happens when they spend. There's two things that this slide shows. One, the incredible dexterity of the canine male penis. Um, <laughs> and secondly, yeah, this bitch obviously spends too much time in the parents' bedroom. She always lay down and then she's made So, like I said, it's very behavioral. It doesn't always go up as planned. Next slide. So, what I teach my clients to do with, with infertile pictures is not so much the use of the speculum, but I do teach them to do vaginal smears. I teach them to collect the vaginal smears and then bring them in, and we then go ahead and examine them. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Next slide, thanks. So you can see how far that vaginal smear has to go. It's no use putting the vaginal smear just on the inside. You've got to go into what's called the anterior vagina, which means you have to go at this smear starts at this angle, pushes up and over the brim of the pelvis, and goes right into the area just in front of the cervix, the anterior vagina, and gently twirl it and bring it out. The smear is next. I always give them some saline. Basically, they get saline, swab sticks, and slides. That's all you need. Always moisten with saline, it's a lot gentler on the beach. I don't know if you can tell me what it's like to get a swab up there. You want to be a zero strip. It hurts. So you've got to be gentle, you've got to push it up and over, get the cells, and things like this. And then we just 
just change that for to, to generate uh, 12, three lots of cells, three rows of cells onto the slide dry over and bring it into us and we put it through. Um, that we'll just stay in it and then we can read it. So, next one. So, what we're looking for is what's called quantification. And I'm mentioning this because some, some uh, of my clients have gone on and even asked me to teach them about that and they what microscopes you do. I don't mind that at all. We're looking for that and we're looking for the, when we look at the slide, we want to see what's the cell type that's inside of this. And so when they're in early proestrus, when it, you know, they've just started bleeding, you see these cells with a very um, definite nucleus and a very definite um, cell membrane on the outside. It's very obvious. As it moves on, it starts to those cells get bigger, but they've still got the nucleus there. And then when they enter what's called the true estrus, the true part of their thinking about their information. You see all these large, oh, this is late, they really get large. We can start to get some white cells in there. Um, they can still use a bit of spent spot things. And we start seeing, this is called quantification, if you like, they're like cornflakes. It's quantification of these cells. They're just like large sheets of them. And this tells us that she's really, pretty much ready to make. Next one, thanks. That's Okay, so you still might see some nuclei, but you start seeing holes in the, in the cell. See all those little holes in that blue cell? That holes, they're, they're really starting to probably out okay, This is just getting on, and we're going to do something soon. We're certainly going to miss that next one. And so what we're looking for is the rough change. And one of the that's correctly said to me yesterday when we were talking about this, um, when it was, don't you look at the diastral shift, and that's when they go from all of a sudden into uh, from estrus to diastrus. That tells me that the estrus probably ovulate. It's like the silence. That's to remind you that that's the primary chief. But we're trying to make sure we get fertilization. But one thing that you want to know, if you've got a bitch that has low fertility, forget photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is not a, an answer to fertility problems. Far from it. You want the vicious in the, the prime. It's like this. And that's another way that we, we're looking for the release of LH. So we can use our cells, and when we see the change from estrus to diestrus, we know we've, we've entered, we had seven to nine days ago, we had the LH surge seven to nine days ago. We had the FLA search for the seven days, or eight days, or nine days, I don't know. There's another variation. And I'm talking about all these variations because these are very important for you to understand. There are lots of these variations. Um, i go back, so. So, this guy who did all the original work, Pat from Cannon in the States on progesterone, also had canine luteinizing hormone ready to go. He could, he could measure that. And I said to you, well, why don't we measure luteinizing hormone? Because the hormones high up are very much species specific. Next, next slide, thanks. Oh, sorry, just before you do, what he did show was the interval um, from the bitch giving birth to her LH surge was always consistent 64 to 66 days. It was consistent 64 to 66. Was it 64? Was it 65? Was it 66? I don't know. Another bloody variation. We're starting to understand why we call the female god a bitch. <laughs> it, it becomes difficult to really get to know that. Then there's more to show. Next slide. So, what we're doing, we've got this LHP some 12, 12 to 48 hours later, the eggs release. 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, I'm not sure. Then they have to mature, and they'll take four to six days to mature, and don't forget maturation is all of them. Because at the end, they have to take a little bit more time for the zone to loose for the soften. All of this I can't tell you. We know the fertile period is here. Next slide, please. So, why not test for luminizing hormone? That's the main reason. 
It's species specific. You can get LH studies done in any human laboratory. They're not for canine LH. It's only for human LH. So it doesn't work. And also, it can be a very short term analysis. And because then people tell me, hang on, there's a urine test for it. We try to get what we do on testing. And any variation in temperature is really, really sensitive and can get the test very quickly. So you have, we have to take urine on basically every death, twice a day, or you can miss it in the urine. It's very, very difficult because it's very expensive. It is species specific. So we have to look. That's what I think. So what we do look for is as the LH peak goes, so the progesterone rise. In some ventures, it starts straight away. As the LH rises, progesterone goes up. In some other ventures, it will start here or here. So there's variation again. And I'm, I'm telling you when this is doing. The fertile period remains fairly broad. You have four, usually four to seven days, four to eight days after the LH peak. A fertile period. Next. So, if you're putting fresh semen in, fresh semen we know lasts for a lot longer than we thought. When I started in dogs, oh, it lasts two days, that's why you made it the second day, yeah? Actually, it lasts for probably four to six days on average. Pat Concanon, who did this work, inseminated the bitch 11 days after the eggs were ready. Um, sorry. Yes, it's you know, it's you know, it's the bitch 11 days before the eggs were ready, before the eggs were ready, and she still felt pregnant. So, in that case, you have a really good quality semen, fresh semen, a really good nutrient environment, and the semen lasted right through. Now, that's pretty unusual, it's not usually that. Um, well, what I've shown you is you'll get a lot of people trying to say there are a lot of different machines for regulation time. There's one that measures electrical conductivity in the uh, um, vagina, others will measure pH. And the reason they work is because you don't understand time. Now, you can measure how much water you can put in the left ear of the dog. As long as you, you put it sometime after the LH surge, you'll probably get pregnant. So be careful with, with what you purchase and what you believe. And there's a lot, so much misinformation you know, on the internet that I can't believe. Chilled semen lasts for two to three days. Um, and frozen semen, probably 12 to 24 hours. Not, three, four, not always 24 hours, sometimes just 12 hours. And so you've got problems. Yes, so that's why we have a pinpoint of this frozen semen. And so if you put semen in here, it's fresh semen, you'll get this fertile period. If you get chilled semen up here, you'll get this fertile period. If you put frozen semen in any time along here, or just here, you'll miss. And sometimes if you put frozen semen in here, you'll still miss because the eggs aren't quite ready. The zone pellucida isn't there. The eggs have to be semen they last 12 hours and you miss. And then you've got problems of breed variation. You know that it's been water I know that because German Shepherds, the original German Shepherd insemination, we had no luck. Then we realised German Shepherds are much later. Old and sheepdogs, they're much earlier. They happen to be two breeds I'm heavily involved with by default. But they're, they're breeds that, that talk to me, there, are, there is incredible breed variation. My old professor, Ian Martin, at the university, felt that this was going to be the case. There would be breed variations that would be a great study for someone to, to do. So I'm talking 1978, 79, now, when we did do a study on um, frozen semen. It was the original study that the dog will pay for on the came on frozen semen, where we looked at box heads, scores, or pellets, and different digits that were available at that time. Digits have improved a lot, of course, so we get what we think looks like better post hormones. But this is not. We haven't done it down at the top of our hands pretty easy to do. We have this great looking semen from the people in the Afghan, the Americans, kind of miners down the road from me, bought the semen, it's really everything's moved, we use it, missed out. It happens. It's 
Spaniards, the Cruz, the Mexican Spaniard, Bill says, Sin Misa. Is that four in a row? I'm missing my book. I don't want to be wrong. But we made inquiries. We just seen them look like I sent post all those to the people who were sending We found out all around the world people were missing out. So even though you got good post all those to us, you didn't see them. The very tip of what's called the atrosome was probably soft and couldn't penetrate the same as this. So the semen was set all over the world because it's all so famous, it never produced a puppet. That's another variation you get with Frodo C. I'm not trying to push you off Frodo C. I'm trying to teach you that this cutting edge technology, this is, you're going to roll it up short, you've had a good success with it, you've got all that to date, it testifies that touch of wood. And you have, and maybe that might help um, produce a little bit of other people use all over the place, and it never happened in the state. It can happen, but not always. Next slide, please. Okay, so this, is, this was suggested by uh, people in America, or just do a whole lot of inseminations. That's fine if you live in America and you only have to fly across protein from a short distance and even in tank. When you look in Australia, it's a lot harder. You know, you, you can put the same cost. Firstly, you've got to get all the, all the blood tests done on the dog. And that's going to cost you money. Then you've got to have the same frozen. Then you have to have the same transported. Then you have to have it stored. Then you have to have all the tests. Then you have to have the insemination. It becomes expensive. So, what I'm trying to say to you here is be careful of. I had one colleague of mine who I said to him, no, I wouldn't be importing um, from the stock from what I heard. He sent the money anyway, and then he got the best of half sorry in the center never froze, and we went for that money. He said, well, no one spent it all trying to freeze the And he did a lot of money in, and they've got any scene. Um, so he did get some people who are a bit unscrupulous. You want to make sure that you get enough scene, not just one go. Some people will start trying to sell you just, oh, I was just going to sell you one insemination. It may not take. Be fair, by all means, look, I'll pay your stud fee, plus whatever the costs are, and then we'll do an insemination, we'll get a litter, that's, that's fine, we'll do another litter, we'll pay you another stud fee. That's reasonable. A lot of stud fee is now just one stud fee, and we'll, that'll be fine, you get the whole lot. You just talk to your vets and make sure you're getting the right thing to pay money. When you're doing frozen semen. Thanks for the assignment. So, the variations that we've talked about so far, we've got 20.48 hours for the LA surge, and then we'll get ovulation yeah, within 24 hours of that. Then you've got overmaturation, three to five days after the LA surge. Progesterone marks in some uh, breeds occurs almost 24 hours prior to ovulation. Um, in other breeds, it's certainly post ovulation. And, and then you've got the LH surge itself. We know it can vary because you've got the 64 to 68 days for parturition from the LH surge. So you've got quite a big gap in that as well. And these four variations make it very, very difficult to really decide what you're going to, what you're going to do. Um, I've learned from experience there are a few parameters I look for. And I haven't written these down because everybody wants to know what number. You can't even know the number to inseminate, do you not? Know? Yeah? Because there ain't a number. To have one number suggests that every inch rises on the same curve. To have one number means there's no variation between breeds. Now we know there's very variation between breeds, and we know that there's plenty of variations within my group, you know, between this fish and that fish and that fish. And so, if I say to you a number, yeah. may or may not work, I'll give you a rough estimate now. Basically, if I'm doing a normal mating, I'll do it two days after it reaches 15,000 miles per week for a normal mating. And then I'll do another mating 48 hours after that, even though the semen should last longer. So after 15, for a normal mating, if I'm doing a chill breed, I usually do it for one to two days after she reaches 25. If I'm doing a frozen semen breed, I want 
of three things. Firstly, I look at the baseline levels and I look at when it starts to rise. I then say when that rise starts, should be the highest surge is starting, that stays zero. I then count one, two, three, four, five, six days at least before I would see that. I also would like it to be two days after 25, roughly. 30, two days after 30 is fine, but in, in that ballpark. I also want it to be over 50. I want those three parameters. That gives me the best chance of getting the credit in those groups. If it's an old sheepdog or a breed similar to it, I'll bring that back with me. I'll make the deal with it. If it's a German Shepherd or a breed like, like that, I might go a bit later. If it's a boys, I'll go a bit later. Uh, well, so I have had, yeah, yeah, some side hands, greyhounds, a lot of hands. Yeah, they're under pants together. Greyhounds, and that's why it's been so, so successful, greyhounds, in industry, because they are very easy to get rid Despite the fact they use all those hormones on the Now, they still use, well, they still do, they still use hormones to stop the recycling in the greyhound world. And we still go out there for the most preferred of them. In fact, it what makes a fish fertile is cycle. Every time a fish has a season, she is pregnant. Whether she's made it or not, she's pregnant. She produces progesterone in the course of the for nine weeks. That's why right, she knows she's pregnant. That's why right, she knows she produces some milk, some fish that this will show milk, but the nipples will be out for sure. Um, some fish produce milk and then have. Don't you think she must be pregnant? I made that mistake too. The involved on the other side of the planet, the gathering toys, they're nesting, and of course, they're a bit lethargic. They're not quite as what they used to be. I don't know how many times we get people, oh, it's a shower, she's so bloody sparking, and she's not all right. I was actually in the season about two months ago. Oh, yeah, how'd you know? Because she's pregnant. She just wants to be. And, and not stress. So, just what happens then too, that progesterone doesn't just make it feel air on the demand, it also acts on the internal line of the uterus. So, it makes it fit that it's getting ready for eggs to, 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 uh, to be uh, the fertilized eggs to land there and produce the sense. So, that uterus is being handled all the time during the false pregnancy. That uterus, if it overreacts, Pyometra is not an infection in the uterus. Pyometra is an overreaction of the individual to hormones. It's not an infection. In fact, we were talking yesterday at a um, vet hospital, lots of pyometra would go in and you do a swab and set it off to culture. I remember the first time it happened to me, I thought, what the hell? What's wrong with my pathologist? It was sterile. No pus. Uh, no bacteria in the pus. It's pus there. Because it's an overreaction of the inhibition, but there's no bacteria, no bacteria, but it's sterile pus. It does happen. In fact, very common. Bacterial pyometrics, the bacteria is secondary to the hormone problem inside the uterus. Well, if we go ahead with this, that's just a good way to talk about the infertility of the bitch. We will talk about that and we will talk about the topics. Of course, it doesn't have to always be a reproduction. It's just that. Probably at some stage when I was very young, I thought, ooh, they want to be a sex specialist. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I've never heard the number of that species. Um, but it is like that, what I do. Nevertheless, we'll be talking about a few other things. The big dog people will talk about the little dog people will talk about a lot of problems. There'll be a lot of other things we can discuss. And I don't mind here tonight. If there are any questions, what, um, if there are any questions on the topic, please, any time, okay? just stop me and ask. Um, later on, we'll have like a bit of that in the forum where we talk about these topics that I might be able to help you with. Okay, so it looks like this. So, we'll look at some of the. This, is, this was uh, just a lovely um, curve that went well for us. With, but there was one thing that was funny about this. Baseline, and I, I did say to you, this to you guys, this is so to the James Street vets and things. I did say baseline is around 1.2. To 2.3, that's baseline. Now the moles uh, per litre. However, in this pitch, 
baseline was 4.3. You know, the next was 4.5. And it's through one month. So some, some bitches can come in with a high baseline. We need to have conditions very early because I'd like to get this is what I want to see. This pickup. So I call this 16 on this one, day zero. Um, and we made it we made it this fish because she had a baseline. I made the six days after day zero and she told her. Next slide, yes. Um, and this is more typical of what I see. But here we go. Um, it was a little bit difficult because this is definitely baseline. So where's the rise? Is it here? Is it here? It's one of those. It's not. It's not here. But this is that. This was what we call. Sorry. This is what we call day zero. The three point seven mark. We call that day zero. This is what you get. I do have some clients say this. I don't even know about these stairs hanging. I'm doing pedestrians every day. I want to know day zero. Once I explain this. People think I'd like to do traditionals early money. In actual fact, my traditionals machine is about to be the answer to my ego. It costs me money, it does, because we, we get serviced, we get service on it, it's 20 grand a year, just for the service on it. Then there's everything else that to go. And then we do what we need to do. We, we take blood from one dog you know, every month, enough blood to send it away to the colleges, plus some of the in house. With an outside audit on that machine. Plus, every couple of weeks, we run the controls. Uh, every week, we run the controls. So, this bitch did fall printing again. I think only a good one's up. So, there's only 100% of the sort. Only one of these are going to send us to death. Next slide, thanks. Um, this is what we call day zero. came in early and then bang, she went straight up. Again, this was day zero. Seven was too high to just beat the other two, but she shot up so fast, she was way over the 50 mark by the time we had seven eight. And um, again, she did four credit, but no bitch, no two bitches are ever really alive. It's a different person, pretty difficult. Thank you. That's why I grew my beard, that's Sally. It's like this. Then, okay, so for LinkedIn semen, what the next slide? Oh, yeah, everyone asked me, well, how do you tell a semen? All the movement, a nice area, which I've got to tell you your area is better than that, so I'd love to be able to tell you that. Of course, stress for activity. Lovely area. Yeah, no risk of infection, but of course, the kind of area. That's how you see. I, won't, I will not go into retro ejaculation. I hate it. I've seen it done in dogs and I think it's quite cruel. Um, so we always, if you are having your dogs collected, please try and organize a vision season. We didn't have vision season, I thought we did. We said, it's all right, I've got swabs. Right through. She put swabs from vision season in the freezer. We did those out. And the pheromones. Got the dogs inside, and the guy said to me today, he said, Oh, you might be able to stop it, but every dog today produces a business of pheromones. And pheromones are very underrated, and you shouldn't, the dogs, they really need them. Uh, but if you can organize the vision season, and I how many clients, I couldn't tell you, I said, It's all right, come give me a sample any time. Yes, you will. You can always get a sample, nearly always, from those dogs without a vision season, that it will never be as good. If you're going to freeze semen, you're going to be able to chop the freezing semen and then want to excuse it four or five, ten years down the track, whatever, you want the best you can get. So try and organise it, you know, as soon as it's in season, then organise the appointment in a few weeks' time to, to freeze your dog. That's one thing. Also, also, do it early. Cross state, so fluid, kills semen. Why? Because cross state fluid, semen is just one like other like cross state fluid. Happy and I clean along and I should want but it it's shooting along to the step because it's it's the really once it's mobile, semen in the testicles is just there, just sits there. But once the prostate fluid gets activated, then ultimately it's going to die. So as the prostate matures and, and you'll have problems, dogs are like humans, we get cystic hyperplasia in our prostate, so the dogs. 
the judge changes and there's certain other factors in the process solution that will deal soon and make it not as viable when you freeze it. So freeze early in life, two to, to five years of age, sure we've done plenty of six years old, seven year old, I knew that the dog that was 13 successfully. But the best advice is if this is a really crappy dog, get it seen and done with this early at early age if you're going to have a treasure. Next slide please. That's my Sally again. Next slide we've done here. Okay, this ovary, this is this, the first slide, is from. What's the problem? There's, there's the. Look, there's, a, there's the, the follicle is starting, the egg develops, it matures, and there's the eggs released. It's on the front of the yes. This ovary is not a dog. No. That's there to remind you. Dogs do not release eggs for the breed to be fertilized. That's, really, that's very important, a very important take <laughs> Dogs do not release eggs for the breed to be fertilized. And it's all those complicated things, all those factors that we have to take into consideration when we're trying to help you pinpoint it. Some dishes, like I said, it's more than half, others are more difficult. And it's doing the show with people coming in late again. Um, so just, just be aware of that these variations that do occur trying to get the dish for Okay, well, we will take any questions. So, again, chill salmon, 
maybe take day, day six, do the space line, two or four days later, and then monitor the security five, and get the scene in the city of the beach, that sort of thing. How regular do you like to see a bridge? How regular do I like a bridge to come to see me? I wish I'd come in every 12 months for a it, it doesn't matter. The, what I don't want is just to come in every three months for a bit, every four months, because what's happening, remember, the uterus has been having all the time hormones, and that's all these infertility problems stay on. I don't like the ones. In fact, some bitches that do come in very frequently, they fall pregnant. So we have to be out of the cycle with specific hormones. We have to be careful because some hormones will lead to infertility. But we, we, we try and keep them out of cycle for a longer period. You want them to have a good rest for an anesthesia period so the uterus then repairs properly and it gets ready. But it's up to them. You know, most features, every six months, the toys will be you know, four to five months. Some of the hounds, 12 to 18 months. I want them to have their first cycle if they're toys. I like them to have their first cycle by four months. The average dog by 18 months, they get worried for them to cycle for 18 months. Big dogs, up to two years. Now, people often come in, oh, it's 12 months, that's their cycle. It's a lot of people who live in America. Now, if it's two years, that's their cycle. Okay, we've got to start shifting things and getting things going on. It's all my therapy. Do you want to get to your head Sorry? If you want to use frozen and fresh, be prepared that probably the fresh will, will take up all years. Do you want to use a lot of them? Um, and very often one side of predominance. It's, it's unusual because I guess in the wild, um, a bitch is, is meant to have a litter by two or three sides. As I was talking about this now, Mother Nature isn't interested in the individual animal. She's interested in the pack. If the pack survives, the species survives. That's what Mother Nature wants. And for the pack to survive, you want two or three sides in the litter. So it be the pack doesn't get into it. Um, but that's what fresh semen that the bitch is making almost you know, to make this dog. Now, and then two hours later, she made another dog, and so on and so forth. But when you're putting in, um, if, you, if you're putting in two, two dogs, uh, if we're doing AIs, I'll literally use the semen and put them in that way. If it's frozen semen, usually the fresh will go on there. But even with frozen semen, I've tried searching and sedimentation with one dog in one room, the other dog in the other room, one dog is predominant. And I'm not sure why that is, but. That's why the nation does to me. She must run me all the time. No! <laughs>
struggled to have a cycle of this option. As I said, that's what they've been using the brain for years. And we thought, oh, it's going to cause And that's caused problems. So it seems to cause problems. It doesn't cause problems of fertility. When you use testosterone, the bitch's clitoris enlarges sometimes and pokes out. And she'll often have a uh, husky discharge because of vaginitis. That's what we need. That's what we 
my title. <laughs> anyway, so um, the reason I want to talk about puppies is because some things sometimes fall off the radar. Right uh, so you get experienced breeders coming in. And I watch all these dogs, it must be some new disease, and I look at it and I go over and, and these are experienced breeders, and they see a little bit of or a little bit of Palestinia or um, puppies with all sorts of things. So I thought I'd go back to basics and maybe bring up a couple of things that you haven't thought about for a while or, or don't do. So if we start with the first slide, and the first slide, oh yes, I remember this slide. This is important. This was from, and this was to remind me of the past, this was from my room in the final year of college at the university. And I just used to stare out this window. How did I get from the exam? I don't know. I used to love that view. Thank you. Thank you, staff. So, what you're trying to get is a happy, healthy, mentally prepared puppy. Yellow. I don't know. Down and 
but then we again out to a different dog, and this time she had five pups, three had the pups. I asked her to breathe one more time. And this time, I put her on high doses of vitamin B. This is 1979. In 78, John Edwards, said, oh, vitamin B stops and so I tried many of those surviving things, you never have another color. Recent research in humans has shown <coughs> that the mutant mutation for for color occurs because you cannot produce enough vitamin B3. So all those years when he was talking about vitamin B, by observing and my listening to a dog reader, because I like to see a dog reader, so sometimes they know something. Um, he's right. Now science is trying to caught up. Someone here was talking about breathing muscle. Back in 78, I was recommending breathing muscle for anti inflammatory. And now science is caught up. They found the anti inflammatory in the gym. Can I just ask you that? Do you think the muscle on the old wives? Yeah, we, 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 our science has to be evidence based. Yeah, I agree. I also have a few people's options once. And in this picture's case, she never produced another good car. Because she only had another three good years after that. Uh, and one was to the same side. Um, and, but we were always recommended by the movie, which is it was a great um, learning tool for me. And it would be great if we could find the actual gene and turn it off, which will happen in the next four or five years. I gave the extra years of genetics and something where these DNA testing in dogs will be pretty much out here, not my life, so I thought this was in the 1990s. Not only are we confusing it now, I'm actually doing research on the expression of DNA. I've never looked at it. So things will change a lot to get the result of the so, yeah, some of that old wife's house, some of them are true, yeah. Um, and I think it would be just developing um, Russian shapes. Right? Remember that? Yeah, everyone's forgotten about it. So, this time I'm trying to bring up. Yes, I think so. Hair lip, um, related to it as well. Yeah, not an uncommon thing related to other house. And I just wonder, I don't know, some of the practice of color which we have color to common is it so mechanical and not a lack of body of being for color I don't know. I haven't found, um, I haven't sort of hidden enough readers to practice color dots to say yes or no. It still goes, but it's just something to think about. If, you know, maybe that's just a body of being, so it doesn't hurt. Not the hurt them, but you've got to start working, you start before they um, come to the system and just keep, keep it going. We know, for example, in um, humans, folic acid, when we call shoot vehicles, just say that I was shooting to you. We've had, I've had a few lines over the years, do have spinal cord heart problems, and we would put on folic acid. Thank you. Next slide. And so for me, yeah, one of the important things is um, making sure the bitch is happy and, and healthy and sitting in a nice, clean, well-being box long before she goes to the I, I just read, I think people come in and, oh, we're going to have an extra set of money in the car because we want to get the well-being box out before she works. The well-being box has to come out of six weeks in and then it settle down. Yeah, six weeks, she had three weeks in the well-being box. That's true. Let it mentally be prepared. Next slide, thanks. Of course, walking boxes nowadays, don't forget, walking boxes do hard for a lot of us. You just have to have a wooden walking box and hard for a lot of us. So if you've had problems in the past, get a little walking box. These new ones that are being made, we've got them made from um, sensitive material that they make um, cool roots from. And you can wipe them and it's insulated because. Even in Queensland, you know, cold in, at night at 3 or 4 in the morning, you can kill nothing. So, nice insulated little box. I don't, particularly for me, I've, I've had, with all my clients and with myself, I've had more success with a heat plant than I do with the heat and heat and welcome box from the fall. I think if puppies breathe in cold air, they get into trouble. That's really the issue. So, I prefer warm air by a heat plant. Thank you.
And the other thing that we have often forgotten are the good evil times for our hearts. We know, we all know, oh yes, they're going to get cost. The first four eight hours of life, they've got to drink from and get cost or they're going to be in trouble. It's much harder to rear puppies that uh, have not had cost. But we forget about the mental side of it. You know, puppies that come from a bitch that's been dragged through the summer and you know, she's out on Maria's terms and she comes in the next week and she's stressed. Those puppies may be the ones that fail in the untested for the German shepherds or, oh yeah, the umbrella of the show looks like it's supposed to be the sun and they're over and over and over. Other puppies have umbrellas over and it doesn't work. You know, you don't think about their mental stability. You want the happy, you know, puppy, yes. What's your thoughts on DNS? Sorry? What are your thoughts on early neurological stimulation? There it is. Yeah. There it is. The early neurological stimulation. You know, when the heart's born, it can only smell and touch. That's all it can do. So I like to, to, to stimulate them early. Yeah. You know, I will now, just gently, I mean, I want the bitch to be comfortable with me. So if it's, a, if it's my own bitch, of course they are. But if it's a bitch I've had out of breeders' terms, which a lot of people do these days, is she comfortable with you touching those puppies? She will be if she comes in at six weeks and sits in the rocking box and is used to you. If she's dragged in in the eighth week and you have those puppies and they're only going to go touch them and she's upset and not good for the pups and not good for her. So get them in early, get the pups, touch your puppies early is what I'm saying. Yeah, but the bitch has to be comfortable with that. But I'm, I'm very, very much part of touching their feet and just touching them just gently. It doesn't have to be for hours. Just, you know, just, if you can twice a day for five or ten minutes, and if you if you haven't got that, not for each pup for the whole minute, five or ten minutes. Get yeah, that time away to really got. Um, Twenty-one days, I, I, fifteen days, two weeks. When they start to hear and they start to see, I like to have the radio on for them, um, especially on Saturday night. No, the radio is um, yeah, just noises. And classical music, that dogs, it's actually if you're evidence based, well, it's classical music that they prefer than anything else. But it's not bad to have you talk out on the toilet so they hear people talking and the believer at times. Um, and remembering that this is the stage where they're used to you touching them. So maybe it's wear a hat from now and then. So if you've got the same person touching the same smell, and you've got the same smell. Then they had to worry about the judge that wears a hat. And if you take your hat off, then you can go to the hat suit. You've got to take your hat off and then go into the class at school. So, at three to nine weeks, I'd like to introduce foreign objects like umbrellas, lawnmowers, <coughs> up close, lawnmower, and a fair way up, and it's made the sounds. And I'm getting them used to the sounds at this stage. <coughs> nine to twelve weeks, I really want to bond with the pup I've kept. If you remember, we used to sell our puppies at six weeks. What stopped that? Carbo. Carbo stopped. When Carbo came on the scene, we were told, vaccinate your pup first in six weeks, sell it two weeks later when the vaccine may have taken. We always used to buy our pups for six weeks and bond with them. It's a very critical time. I always encourage new owners to come out in the you know, five weeks onwards. You know, we get all upset about, oh, you know, actually, how long are you going to be infections or whatever? And, well, I'm not doing something to people that might have to be infected. You know, how many of you talk to your puppy, you know, just to spend some time with your pups, so that the pup has a, a great life afterwards. And 99% of our pups are going to be in their homes. I want to be happy with the so I like bombing straight away and then get them out. This is the problem, of course, when we are trying to socialise for nine to twelve weeks, worry about part of the infections. Uh, and so I'm not that really so I'm not that for the system of installation. We miss a lot of people who do this. I don't like them going to old parts at twelve weeks or whatever. Never there. Who said never? I'm going to do a hack of pus and I'm going to run south and be so fast. Now it's just all worms and, and 
works and things. And then what I do like to try and do, I try and we can not forget this is where it's been to collect it's so much easier to just feed the living in one bowl a couple of big bowls. But once they leave home, that doesn't happen. So don't forget the old rules of trying to get a bowl for each puppy. It's hard work when you look like this, but it's it's doable. Thank you. So what's natural? What is natural for a dog to eat? Dog is a
choice in diet is so important. So then we say balance is diet and we like um, a, a normal diet. We like a raw diet. Next slide. And so we give them all sorts of raw things. People like giving their dogs raw diets. That's a big thing. I'm not sure what's natural about a raw diet. We agree that they eat vegetables, but cooked vegetables. The dog scarf a long time ago evolved to eat cooked vegetables. I mean, grazing carrots is not good. It's just giving them raw vegetables, which goes through. Um, and that's a big problem. Next slide, thanks. So we look at this, no, oh, okay, it's got some meat, it's got some maybe vegetables and lots of chicken, which I've been against for a long, long time. Chicken, um, I like feeding the bones to guys because they're cheap, the raw bones. They are like maniacs or brisket bones or antifibes. In the wild, how often does a dog eat a bird? Not that often. And if you give them chicken bones for their teeth, they go, oh, it's gone. It doesn't really get much worse than that. When I started with the police, I just said, stop with the raw chicken bones, please. And with the staff just said, right, here's the dog. No more chicken bones. I'm not going to have to have all those chicken bones. They've got a whole lot. And it was a big, big dog, a big chip. If the chicken bone goes in like that, and it's not done, it's gone. You have to go and straight, swallow it straight down, block the exit of the dog fight, and the dog fight. Um, so I, don't, I just don't like chicken bones for two reasons, or for a few reasons. One, um, they don't really have teeth. Two, they can swallow them through and get blocked. And most blockages of the bones, you know, you can get artists as well, you can get bandages and block them. Most of them are chicken bones. And then finally, they're not treated with respect in, by the meat industry. You know, when you're feeding a carcass or whatever, the dogs that have come in with salmonella, and I had dogs dead on arrival with salmonella, because you feed more chicken than you have So I'm not feeding more chicken, sorry. And chicken feet, yeah, beautiful. Next slide, thanks. So, and this is another part, same deal, but the guy that came in with this when I was embarrassed, I think, he didn't come back, he liked coming back just with the dog. But you can get it right, you can fix the next slide, thanks. He continued feeding the meat, then they came back, and it was worse. You know, he was developing this condition, which is HIV. It was really bad. We got him back onto a reasonable diet. We feed him like vitamin C, and it's important to my health things. And, you know, these, these were his bones here. This was when I was here. You can see all the, all the lines through there of, of what's called HIV, hypertrophic osteo history of great bones here. Bad disease. And he's still on the balance side. Um, this dog was doing a really bad dog, but eventually we got him back, back on things and you can see a nice pair of legs there, they you know, good feet, good pastures, and we got him back to a reasonable, sort of follow his case through and come back quite well after that war. So, balance with your diet, and I mention this because I see so many, I understand, I started working in a bit of practice in 1971, I was a bit stupid, I was a high school kid, not that old, yet. Um, and I've seen so many fads come and go over that time, a phenomenal amount of fads. And at the moment we're in the raw diet stage, that's the big fad. Everybody should be feeding raw diet and raw meaty bones. My band manager loves to be feeding raw meaty bones all the time, because he wants to pay for dogs. Yeah, be careful of what you feed dogs. Millions of dollars spent on research and good offers to try to not all the money. Find one that suits your, your particular breed and your particular lines. You can use extra protein with it. Um, because the wild dog uses extra protein, so you're not balancing you know, the dog food now, so you know, that doesn't balance the diet, that's what it's saying. Now, we've got the, the, the right level of protein, the Korean accent, the Korean whatever they're now in the food. Yeah, you have. But I want quality of food, the protein, the short, I need to ask the quality of that. It's processed. I prefer to use some unprocessed quality protein mixed with that, and it has what's called a synergistic effect. If you get a pasta and bolognese sauce, the pasta protein is here, the bolognese sauce, the meat is here, 
when you combine the this protein all together, synergistically. That's why I do feed sometimes the fish, we give out the adults fish, we give out the adults fresh meat, um, cheese, things like that. But it's not the bulk of the diet and there's no sudden changes. The dry food that we've selected for our adults is just the bulk of the diet. We use so the water and the meat and that's the food. Once a week, they're all over. Think about your diets, talk to your vets by all means. Um, I do get a lot of clients saying, this is not a dread for a side of the pack that my dog just won't be, but they say. I sometimes think the dog food manufacturers should get to feed the dog or something because they want you to be six cups to a particular dog. So the most common thing, the most important thing is to use common sense and just watch your dog and watch their weight. And we have weight programs for our dogs. Um, for our clients, that was all the time just to make sure they're in the right. Next slide, please. So, the other thing that we have to remember, of course, is worms. So, I like this, yeah. And again, this is something that I do see very often with the experience for it, is that you get to run the adults, that you get to run the puppies. And unfortunately, because some people out there turn up with wounded dogs, our grounds are becoming infected. Our grounds are just a little bit like the old world, not the old world, it's now. The greyhound tracks, or you just walk on them and you get all good. You don't have to walk on them with no shoes on the greyhound track, and you will pick up all good of yourself, and you will through your skin. That's how all good works. You go through your skin. Because greyhound tracks have been visited with all good for years and years and years. Some of our grounds around the country have been the same thing. <coughs> so we've seen a big rise in all good. Because when you worm your puppies, you'll kill 
should have come out with the Palace as well. But the bottom line is, you can't even do that. You can't do it. There's no product at the moment. There is a product in the market until the industry. So there's no real it's still, you can do it before you do shops, it's similar to the These days, a lot of people are working once a month because they're giving you a hundred bucks that they do that. Um, so, you can still work with the market. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's the nature of the Well, I use once a month medications for heartburn, and um, so, that, and I use them. And I use the products that also do wounds as well. So I just continue that through the pregnancy. I have not, um, I don't believe that the strategies, they're, they're not products that cause abnormalities in developing the developing countries. So I'm happy to do the new sales to recommend those. So I just do mine. If I say I used uh, an injectable hardware product, and then I would be working like I, I tend to say with those people, if you're not showing, you might be able to get away with four times a year working. And then I just say to change it in the season to make it easy. If you're reading the vision, you can work with six weeks, just make sure she's not going to stop this. It does nothing to help this. Someone had a question over here? No. Yeah, you can use the product. So we understand that. And the other thing is, one of the reasons I do like the once a month members, don't forget, these larvae can go into to children and they can end up in places. And one of the other problems with doctors is it's much more common than we realise. The larvae can go into the, the child's lives from the If they go to the brain or the lives, it wouldn't be a And the high gatherings are good for That's really bad news. But that's, that's another thing that's got nothing to do with The best one to use for parties, I'm not going to tell you what I don't use. Um, I'm not big on suspensions because they're easy to go down the wrong way. Yes. I prefer tablets. And I like Milbamycin, and that's the one I use. Milbamycin, that's the product. Talk to your vet, they'll know which one I'm talking about. And they come in little tablets. I use them, I've used them for clients with chihuahuas. I've used them for big dogs easy. I, what I do, sorry? What do you do to think? Like, probably a 7 o'clock coffee. 7 o'clock coffee, I still use milk and milk and milk. But what we might have is 7 o'clock coffee. In fact, all my milk is in my big puppy dogs at this point. Um, all my milk is I do like just a little bit of butter on the tablet and it just slides down. Just a little, not too much. You don't want so much of it to cause diarrhea. Um, you're picking all the butter here. Just, just a, a little bit sneak on the We have a, a thing of butter sitting in the fridge for our, with our dog food in, in the kennels and that. And I just use that for the. Yeah, make sure that the leaves are sitting in there and they'll go rancid. Make sure it's fresh. Yeah. So, next slide, Tex. And the other bug that we see a lot of, I've seen more of these days, is coccidia. People tell you, and vets will tell you for some reason, that coccidia is a very dirty place. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Coccidia just occurs. We don't, I'm not sure why, because I've seen coccidia in the most cleanest of kettles, and the puppies have not left the world in box. And I don't know how that happened. So if you get diarrhea in your pups, Two things I recommend. Think about wearing them, but definitely collect some of the droppings and get them to the bed. Now, be aware that with coccidia and some of them, they'll lay eggs and they'll stop, they'll lay eggs. So you could have an egg and start with the coccidia. So you may have to do repeated samples. Don't let them get the blood and get this sample. No, just there was nothing in that sample at that time. So just do repeated feed samples if you worry. Uh, and coccidia for me can be very easy to drop in. Yes, ma'am. You can't prevent pops. Can't you prevent the best of the here? You can if you work with it because you, you, you're not going to do, do fecal flows just for your works. You're not going to wait for that. You're going to do seven to ten days and work. Another seven to ten days later, work again. And you might do that three or four times and then 
Vaccinations, yes, this is part of it. In 1977, I graduated and I wondered how from the university. Um, I had too much of a good time in finally. And um, in 78, actually, in, yeah, in 77, when I was a student, there was a place where puppies were dying in. Some from congregational drivers, and some were just that they got through the puppy stage and not fine, and then the 12 weeks just like they would drop here. And we, we sent samples all over the place and we told burpees and all sorts of things. But 78, the end of 78, 79, uh, we had a lot of enterprise um, in this town and spread around the area. A lot of dogs came up to the Brisbane Royal. All the judges, the national judges, were in the home court this new virus was all around the place. I think that's how it started. Other ones were not um, But all of a sudden, this new virus started. It was just And for ages, we couldn't save the dogs. And it was Parvo. I wrote one of the first papers on Parvo with Professor Ceylon and um, Daria Love. University, we wrote the very first paper on part of our virus, student virus, and then all of a sudden we all around the world by that thing. So when I hear people say they want to use herbal vaccines at first, I remember how dreadful it was in that time. I used to go upstairs, I used to live on, on top of the clinic. I'd be I used to cry, I couldn't say these dogs, I thought just I was hopeless as a vet when I didn't know it was part of it. And then when I knew it was part of it, I felt it even worse, I think until the vaccine came out. And then, unfortunately for a while, the good vaccine came out, and then the manufacturer produced a vaccine that wasn't so hot. It used to you know, vaccinate and they'd get part of it. Um, so everyone stopped vaccinating, and what came out this then? And I went to one kennel and put down $36 on one day and did the Part December, hepatitis is still out there. And the shortest way to find them is just don't vaccinate. People say, well, what about you know, your profession is saying that it's vaccinated every year? I vaccinate my dogs every year. Oh, you yeah, only do it for the money. I make more money out of treating one case of parvo than vaccinating 50 dogs. I don't want to make my money that way, people. Think about it very carefully before you decide when you're going to stop vaccinations. And if you live, yeah, I vaccinate six weeks and our own puppies, we do six, 12, and 16 weeks. That's it. And then annually after that, do we get? Do I get worried about vaccines for cancer, vaccines for serious cancer? Yeah, okay, probably. Don't vaccinate, but don't go crying and believe me. It's not that. Sorry. Teeth test. Yeah, teeth test is fine. You can do a teeth test. Um, if you're worried about the vaccine causing problems, but teeth test. You know, what are you going to do with the treatments? You're going to do it for hepatitis, you're going to do it for December, you're going to do it for parvo. Generally, people do it just for one. Um, and the other thing I found, um, a lot of people do it for within two years, a good number of them are failing their treatments. And so, if it's in two years, are you in that 15% that fails or not? I don't know. I do the treatments for vaccination. But the two tests is quite reasonable. The only thing is when there's that team run out. I know when the vaccine is always from the team. What's that three years since? Three years. Three years in the stamper shot um, uh, is just a really big dose of the virus. That's my understanding of it. I, I'm just not a fan of it. I just prefer the once a year stuff. Uh, yeah, like manufacturers assure me it's great, I guess so. Yeah, good. Yeah, hard I was That's really good. Plus, for me, especially with um, my 
when I was still a puppy, I wanted to make sure it was always looked after, and yeah, it's okay, I'm a vet, so if it's in the stable, just go there once a year. This, it gets a health check before it's vaccinated. You know, the reason I'll check with your pet puppies, you know they're going to be looked after a little bit better than that. Silence. Next slide. That, for those that have read my book, that's the view from my classroom when I was a kid. How did they ever get through school or university or one of the sunsets? That was the view from my classroom. So when you read my book that I gave you, you will understand that. I now have a visual. You have a visual the view from my classroom. Next slide. I don't know how that one got in there. We're done. Okay. Thank you. 
shield or something like that. She will not carry something like that. And I said, chicken casserole. I love chicken casserole. You know, I'm Italian. And the boys. But um, I, don't, I don't do much chicken at home because of that issue in the front girls. Right? Like the Mormons call it. So some of my girls, I don't know why. My wife always, oh, the barbecue chicken's not special. I've got some of the girls. Mm, okay. I don't like it. You don't feel it. But I don't like it. Interestingly, that um, same speaker about the news for her, um, <clears throat> he said that it's actually 30% news for her in human grade food. The only difference is that we, we, we cook our food before we eat it. Yeah, I haven't um, seen that statistic ever. Yeah. But that's but he's, he's been working on it. I'll food. believe it and I'll my food for my meat for my dogs. Yep, so if you're feeding me, especially a pregnant bitch. Yeah, the Yeah, the question was just when you said raw meat to bones, which yeah. I've always done, there's certain ones, like I used to feed lamb bones and they're too fatty, so are the ones I, I, I like to feed lamb necks. Yeah. They're okay. not so fat, they've got a bit of meat on them, so they don't really, you know, get into it and try away. It gives them, for me, bones are not just about nutrition either. Not just about clean and clean, but they're in the suit for the dog. There's something for the dog to do as well. Yeah. 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 We yeah. need to think more about yeah. the mental health of our dogs. Personal, that's my guess. What about turkey necks? Turkey necks? Yeah. 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 Yeah. Turkey necks? Yeah. 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 Turkey necks? 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 Yeah. Turkey